Okay, hello. I think we're live. The third time now, I think we've hopefully got the technology down. So, um, hello, everybody. I am here with a fun panel of, uh, I was about to say judges, but I guess you're judging people and things. I'm not sure why, why it was a panel of judges, but regardless, we're here to talk about Survivor Maryland. No, it's episode. appropriate. Okay, yes. Lita will at least be judging. Um, she'll be giving her rulings. She has a gavel today. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to see um, where things take us for Terrapin Trials episodes four and five. Um, should have a lot to talk through. We got to see both tribes go to tribal this time. So I was trying to throw Lita off, making her not think that, you know, grouped episodes were always the same tribe. So hopefully that worked. Um, but anyway, excited to kind of introduce you guys to the people that we have here. So first of all, you've seen her for the, uh, the she's now a Survivor Maryland staple at this point. Uh, it is Lita Broman. Um, the crazy thing is I actually do have a gavel. Kevin uh, got me a gavel for my birthday that says Chief Justice of Cancellation, uh, <laughs> but it's in D.C. right now, and I am in Pittsburgh. Devastating. Oh, that's the worst news I've heard I yet. know. It's I because I was the official judge for the uh, Dom and Colin Big Brother Cancellation draft, where they draft who would be canceled first. Wasn't literally everybody from that Big Brother season canceled? Pretty much, yeah. Almost everybody. Okay. So the gavel is very worn out. It's got a lot of use. Exactly. Uh, and then our other two guests joining us today, we have, um, uh, I'm really excited to talk to them. This is the first time I've talked to one of them. And one of them is also like even more so than Lita, I think, a first time Survivor Maryland watcher. So from the legendary new podcast about Survivor, The Bitter Jurors, we have Sam and Derek. How's it going? Hey. Hello. Um, so, uh, thanks for coming to chat with us. Sam just had me on their podcast recently, so I feel like we should return the favor for sure. But um, we've also never, Sam, we've never even had you on Survivor Maryland coverage because you also started watching it late. Well, yeah, I my I got into it right after I saw the final four of season six, so I would have had no opportunity to come on to cover any episode so far released of Survivor Maryland. <laughs> That's actually, um, that's a week ago, I mean, a year ago this week, because we were in Philadelphia the weekend before Easter, and that's coming up this week. And you felt so shamed when we played the game where, uh, cheers to the governor, and you couldn't name Survivor Maryland characters, so that really inspired you, right? Okay, well, that was not, it did, the only reason it kept repeating to me was because Laura could not remember some other fact about some other show, right? What was it? <laughs> Um, Sam calls me Laura, first of all, um, right. and I, it was, it's because I'm historically really bad at truth to the governor and I just kept messing up. So it kept coming to Sam. It's you had to but Sam's the king of knowing things. Also, Survivor Maryland. Sorry. All, all you have to do for Survivor Maryland is say Katie five times and you'll be right. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that. I knew Shubrina and, and like no one else. <laughs> Derek is like, who the hell is? So he? you got. <laughs> uh, anyway, cool? yeah, um... I'm happy to be a Survivor Maryland super fan now. And as you mentioned, yes, I had to have Austin on to talk about Maryland Madness because I was engaged in that tournament. It did not turn out the way I hoped or wanted it to, but uh, it was still really fun. Same. It was lit though. It was lit. <laughs> yeah. um, but as mentioned, uh, Derek and I have a Survivor podcast called The Bitter Jurors. We, uh, and we are, we're recently trying to brand as the only queer Superman Survivor <laughs> podcast. Uh, and I think that's true. And I have not yeah. checked it at all. But like eight years ago, <laughs> Derek and I met on Tumblr. And then I got into yeah. Survivor through Lita. And then he got into Survivor for me. Yes. Although we should always give the credit to Shireen and not you. Because it was a gif of her raising her hand. I was like, I got to get in on this. Derek, so. did you know that Shireen is a Survivor Maryland fan? Oh, my God. Why is she the most perfect person in the world? Like, <laughs> I can't I can't handle it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I, I think I mentioned this on the first stream we did, but she literally took a compilation of Faluke clips and sent them to Survivor Casting. Uh, good, because <laughs> <laughs> she is incredible and should have already been on this show five different times. Um, so the only Derek. time I've ever met Shireen, oh sorry, no, no, um, I just have positive feelings about Shireen because the only time I've ever met her in person, we ran into each other in the ladies' room at Know It All's Toronto, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm such a huge fan, and she was like, oh I know who you are, you're the vegan, and I was like, <laughs> yes, and she was like, I've seen you on Twitter, and I was like, 
I've seen you on Twitter, girl. <laughs> and it was a very pleasant interaction. Is, <laughs> is that your defining personality trait? I think probably. Like, kinda. <laughs> Lita the vegan. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I never think so. It used to be Spice and Intern Lita, and now it's like Vegan Jew Lita. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the combo we all were just waiting for. Um, Powerful so, mm -hmm. actors. Uh, so, Derek, this is your <laughs> very first time watching Spider Man. Right? Yeah, my very, very first. I had no knowledge whatsoever. Like, I had heard of it. Like, people would talk about it on Survivor Reddit back when I actually like checked that thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that looks cool. But then would it's because it's me, I would never actually like commit the time to actually watch it. Um, and so when I saw Sam do this uh, Maryland Madness podcast with you, I was like, okay, this is my excuse to actually finally watch this. And I've been loving it. Like, it's incredible. It's giving me everything that the last few seasons of Survivor have not. So, And you're totally unspoiled, right? Yeah, I like... Yeah, I just know there is an All Star season. I think next season, right after this one, one I more, and then the All Star season. But the order is all kind of irrelevant. And I think I know some, like, I know at least two people from this season that are on that season. If that makes sense, like, I know mm -hmm. two names that are going to be All Stars. So I had my eyes on them going well, into this. Spoilers? So. Not this is not spoilers, but uh, one of the people on All Stars is Sierra, and I think Lita probably wouldn't even guess that. So you never really know where the All Stars are going to come from. See, yeah, I um, didn't know that Sierra was on All Stars. She's an All Star <laughs> to me. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> I'll start all of us. Um, so let's let's anyway let's get into it. I'm um, excited to have you all here and talk about episodes four and five. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I guess I, I'll start with um, Derek since we haven't heard any of your takes yet. So, what what is your feeling five episodes in on this season in general? Well, first of all, my very first big note is um, I love the shot of the Jim Henson statue that you have in your intro. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, I I just love seeing Kermit like whether in plush form or in bronze form on my screen. So that that's been delightful to see. <laughs> uh, and I guess my other big take is Faluke like. Holy, holy shit. Like, what an amazing character. Um, so far, a great player. Like, yeah, um, that was my big takeaway, especially from this most recent episode of the two we watched this week, is holy crap, this entire Hukatana tribe, like, even the weakest player, I would say, would be probably Harry, and even he's not a bad survivor player, I guess, I would say. To me, personally, like, everyone on that tribe, I think, is a good, sur like, naturally good at this game, so... Those, I Hukata guess, are my biggest Hukatana takes. is stacked, and if Eric had stayed with the tribe from, like, it would just be the best tribe ever. Oh, I don't right. even know what happens in that scenario. That's it. I don't know, but it's a, it's definitely a talented tribe if Eric remains. I right. feel like Luke and Eric team up. I feel like that'd be a thing. I would love that. My two queens. <laughs> um, so, Lita, uh, you just had two episodes. Did you have any kind of major you know, first takeaway, uh, judge, judging thoughts to give to everyone? A um, couple things. One, I have a great photo of me sitting on Jim Henson's lap on the Survivor Maryland campus. Um, I think I'm talking to Austin on the phone of it. Um, <laughs> and it is on my list of DMV statues ranked on how easily you can sit on their laps and call them daddy. Um, wow. That is uh, a BuzzFeed list I'm going to have to curate at some point. Um <laughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that this is uh, a little bit, uh, thank God for Sabrina, I think because uh, otherwise all of the major personalities I think are on um, Hukatana. Um, but I do think like, obviously Eric is a big personality. It's not one that I'm ever gonna be a fan of. I would love for Derek to settle whether or not he thinks Eric King is hot because Sam and I have a deep disagreement on this. I, my first gut reaction is no. He's not one of the Thank like you. ones I find very attractive. I do have two, like my two, but I will probably be judged for the two that I think are attractive. I mean, <laughs> aren't we all team Alex here? He's my number no? two. Wow. I just there don't. We go. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, um, what? I'll, I hate I'll let you figure out who my number <laughs> one is. I hate <laughs> Alex. Alex J is the most boring person that's ever been on Survivor Maryland. No, I'm saying We're I think he's cute. At. Well, yeah. I don't like it. 
<laughs> Wait, okay. I'm waiting to hear. I mean, uh, is it uh, Terry? No, you're close. It's um, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> like, ew. Why is that ew? He's everything I could ever want from a man. He's um, loud. He doesn't seem very. Um, I don't want to be mean. Like, not very like cerebral. Like, he's very like pure id. Like, I don't want to yeah. be mean. He just is. Looks like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he behaves in an idiot like manner, but I think Derek is calling Harry a himbo. Absolutely, that's exactly the word I would use. Uh, yes, himbo? that's what. I, I, wait, I've literally never heard that term before. But that it's yeah, a recent just, term. Is, yes, big himbo <laughs> energy, and that's why Harry is my number one thirst pick. So, look, we all know that Zach and Eric are where the hotness is at this season. Uh, Zach looks. Nope. Li- Zach is the spinning image of um, one of my superiors at work, and it freaks me out every time I see him. So he's just not even relevant to my hotness rankings. He looks like a seventh grader. <laughs> I, I don't I know. Seventh grader? Are you going to school with? <laughs> what? What seventh graders were you with? Uh, I don't know. Ugly ones, apparently, because they look, look like Zach. Oh. <laughs> um, the shade is knee deep. We're the, all dis- we're all in deep disagreement on this podcast. The thirst ranking yeah, is very contentious. Yes. Uh, we'll have, we'll have to, to sink on that and do a draft <laughs> after the season. Um, oh, someone just commented in the chat named "ugly means." So I feel like <laughs> that's yeah. I have no wait. Is that one of your best that That's Alex, <laughs> my boyfriend. It's not surprised oh, oh, I'm oh, attracted to Harry. <laughs> Uh, that's a good. That's a good name for that. Yes. Um, so, uh, and then Sam. So you have obviously seen this whole season. So we're not going to have you kind of give your long term takes. But h- how is the rewatch going for you? I mean, I think I could accurately predict what's going to happen. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, I, well, I texted you guys this earlier. Like, I don't remember exactly who goes when. And there was one of the episodes we watched today that I like couldn't remember because I know this one character goes soon but i didn't know when it was gonna happen and i was like on i was like on the edge of my seat thinking that this was the episode that it actually was gonna go down and i don't want to say what it is because no spoilers <laughs> but uh it like it's still like it's so gripping still rewatching it i love all these characters uh this was the first season of survivor maryland that i ever watched and i it's i i it's wonderful casting and great tv Nice. Well, let's start with the Rafiki tribe because I think we definitely have a lot to talk about with Hukatana, but Rafiki went first with episode four. Um, Lita, did you have any kind of major um, thoughts from them or, or shifts in your feelings about them? Did we lose Lita? Oh, no. The <laughs> delay is increasing. Okay. Yeah, or she just literally has no thoughts on Rafiki. <laughs> I mean, really... same, but... <laughs> I have some thoughts. They might not be great ones, but they're thoughts. I have thoughts. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for Lita to hopefully uh, check back in. Derek, what were your thoughts on Rafiki? Um, I guess my thoughts are I feel I... very... <laughs> yes, you were. There she is. <laughs> there she blows. I hear you. Oh, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, no. You keep freezing. Uh-oh. Yes. Oh, Lita's audio quality is about as good from the as the episode four tribal. Here you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, no. we, all right. Oh, oh, the woman were voted out. No, <laughs> no. One of the most iconic final threes. It's my worst nightmare. Um, uh, okay, Derek, your, your thoughts. Okay, on so uh, yeah, my thoughts on Rafiki was were that um, poor Kane, like poor guy, <laughs> he just doesn't know what to do. Like, I felt so bad watching Alex be like, yeah, you made a bad decision. And here's like a literal notepad where I'm going to write out why it was a very stupid decision that you made. And like, I don't know if it was, I guess, maybe you could speak to whether this is true or not. Like, my impression was that maybe Eric told Kane, like, oh, we just can do this one strategic vote. And then we can go back to just, you know, voting for the good of the tribe after this. Like, it felt very that, either that or just... That's how Kane justified it to himself. I think, yeah, I think they made some agreement beforehand where it was like, all right, if you flip back on the Revo, like, yeah, it's fine. Like, we'll, uh, we'll right. you know, go down that line next. And I think, I think Kane just really trusted Eric, which is what it came down to. Yeah, it's just sad. Like, I don't know. Cause like, 
I feel bad for Kane for clearly like kind of being out of his depth. I feel bad for Alex and Maria for um, being the biggest sufferers for that fact. But I also feel bad for the heart, uh, the home wreckers because they have to rely on this guy to <laughs> like keep their numbers, at least for like a few, like at least those few votes they needed him and so like i just felt bad for everyone involved in that ser- scenario yeah watching him and alex g talk in the dorm room where he <laughs> alex is like do you understand like what's going on and he's like it seems like yeah we just voted her out because like i don't know like it didn't really seem like even in his explanation he understood why things happened i wrote down alex saying kane this is why you could have been in power <laughs> yeah kane Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sam, that was, I thought that was one of Alex G's finer moments. Uh, we've got, you know, I'm sure, I mean, that probably was one of his <laughs> finest moments in the Survivor Maryland canon. Yeah. It was just like speaking for all of us at home who were like, yeah, what? That was hey, not the move. <laughs> but I'm against Alex G. Like, I want the home records to stay intact. So, like, <laughs> it was fine by me. Right. Uh, Lita. Yeah, I don't like, for the record, I don't. Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, for the record, I don't like love Alex G. I mean, he like said that Sabrina wasn't very smart. There's a lot of men calling women dumb on this season. Like, somebody called Fluke yeah. dumb in the pilot. Like, don't love it, guys. Um, so, it's <laughs> not like I'm in on Alex G. I just feel like if we have to pick a crush, which we obviously do because it's important. Um, yeah. cause what else am I going to talk about strategy? It's not who I am. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I'm not rooting for Alex G and I am, I'm not necessarily rooting for the home records, but I'm rooting for Sabrina and to an extent, Marissa. Um, Lita, we were checking in with you. Did you have, so is that kind of your overall takeaway from Rafiki after this still pro Sabrina and Marissa? Yeah. And Marissa is the original queen of social distancing. My favorite quote of the, uh, <laughs> First, she's yeah. she's zooming in. Yeah, she's doing she's doing a FaceTime into Tribal Council last week, and then this week she's wearing a mask. My favorite quote of the episode was Austin, or uh, she said, "I'm wearing this because I have SARS." Austin, do you really hurt? No. <laughs> Austin, she doesn't have SARS. So precious though for this moment. <laughs> Topical. Topical of. Uh, <laughs> Marissa really like it's, it's a time capsule. Mm-hmm. We love Marissa because she I wears know. so much stuff that says Pittsburgh on it. <laughs> I know, but she's so. not from here. Okay, but she still appreciates the city. No, I'm saying I I just don't understand <laughs> why. I, I mean, what shirt? I, I could have worn. I should have. There's a lot of iconic fashion, like the Sierra's All American Rejects shirt. Like, I love yes. it. They should let people wear this these like branded shirts on actual Survivor. Yeah, the one no, the but Austin had to clear it with All American Rejects. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. me sometimes be like, oh, like, did you get all the, like the sponsorship rights for these things, or whatever? And I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's not monetized yeah, or anything. Not. Yeah, so. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, Nike paid me to advertise. <laughs> the uh, Lita, I forgot to ask you if you had any burning questions on the top. I know we usually start off with those. Any BQs? Uh, what are they smacking down the eggs with? Are those cutting boards? Oh, no. <laughs> no, they're um, trays from the diner. I forgot about that challenge. I missed that challenge. <laughs> that was a good challenge. They looked like that the trays. That was I... really weird. <laughs> Yeah, they look like the trays. I was a sandwich artist at Subway. Um, they look like the trays they use there for baking bread, <laughs> is what I thought. <laughs> yeah, well, they're also great for swatting eggs in Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that at the time. Great. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was my major question. I also like uh, the hidden immunity idol clue. Using the word betwixt, I feel like you were ahead of the curve on the bequeathed craze on Real Survivor. <laughs> I don't even remember when I wrote these things. I have no recollection. I think I blacked out. Just went into- <laughs> oh, my my other question was like, did in case people like didn't, uh, well, I guess like people have to tell you immediately if they find the idol, right? Like, did anybody ever forget? 
Um, not in my time. Um, it wouldn't be forget as much as like they want. Just wanted imagining to you it. like, yeah, the Danny Boatwright strategy, not telling production yeah. that they found the yeah. idol. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am just imagining you like starting your morning every single day, checking to make sure the idol is still there. <laughs> I did that a, a lot of times for some of the, depending on where the locations were. I was always very worried they would like wash away or some random person would find them or like the tape would fall off. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking too, was that like somebody would just like grab it. Um, but I guess they were pretty well hidden. I yeah. did love tkinecklace.com or whatever. Yeah, uh, com. there. <laughs> Great plug for them. Did anyone actually look at that? I, had... I haven't. No. I feel like my major problem when I played was that I didn't look for an idol because I had no idea what it would look like. So I feel like I should have watched this before. Um, TikiNecklace.com is pretty interesting. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> it says Tiki Necklace. Large selection of Tiki Necklace in different sizes, si uh, styles, sizes, and price levels. This uh, There are a lot of Tiki Necklaces on TikiNecklace.com. <laughs> wow. This reminds me of when they promo like um, boobsforqueens.com on Drag Race or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, um, we need breastplates for whenever Survivor Maryland is uh, revived. We need what? Um, yeah. Breastplates for like the immunity idol is what we need from oh, okay. boobsforqueens.com. Okay. I haven't. I need. I haven't checked. Tiki out. necklaces for queens. <laughs> I um, well, never mind. No, Sam. What? I, well, it was about. It's about a season of Survivor Maryland that hasn't aired yet. <laughs> I oh, just uh, am. A, there's a drag queen contestant, right? Uh, there is a contestant. Yeah, there is a drag queen contestant in uh, eleven. <laughs> Spoiler. Sorry, Anders. I don't know if he's listening to this. Whoa. Um, that's okay. We won't see it for another 30 years. It's true. Yeah. Also, it's not even the end of the season, so whatever. Um, the, uh, uh, did we, oh, what are our kind of, uh, do we have any final thoughts on Maria? I know, Lita, you weren't a huge um, fan going in. Where did you settle up on Maria? Still not a huge fan. Don't care. <laughs> um, Derek, your thoughts on Maria? I like Maria because, I don't know, <laughs> she seemed very, um, I don't know, What's a good word? Folksy. <laughs> like, she is very chill. <laughs> Clear. Like I loved her voice. Very raspy. Very uh, real. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I liked in her. She's a queen to be. <laughs> I liked in her exit confessional. She was like, "Yeah, I didn't really play the strategic game." <laughs> she was like, "Just uh, like I was only." But she had a lot of fun, which I love. I'm yes. glad that she had fun despite going she... out so early. Yeah. Very um, reminiscent of one of my favorite Survivor characters of all time, Zoe from Marquesas, you know? <laughs> Work hard, play hard. That was the uh, Maria credo. <laughs> well, it's funny. I always think of Maria as, like, the the Survivor Maryland equivalent of, like, the 45-plus woman, like, the hag architect. Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. she, She's, like, the college version of that. That's why we love her. Um, like, okay. a little bit of, like, Nina from One World. Exactly, Yeah. <laughs> I think my Zoe I was reference say Dr. was a lot Sean from timely. the first season. <laughs> Dr. Sean. I don't know. Alex um, feels kind of Dr. Shawnee, but I guess he's a little better at strategy, except not when it comes to actually being on the side of the votes ever. Um, some notes I had from uh, episode But four. he is like trying. Who? He is trying. That's true. Bless him. <laughs> um, I had I had notes from episode four that were one, uh, and I feel like it became a meme that Alex was always eating ice cream. Yeah, that <laughs> was, was something. Oh in yeah, that, that ice cream didn't look good either. Oh no, that, it that, looked, that uh, ice cream was actually hard. Good. So, where was the ice cream okay. from? It's the the just on campus. There's a there's a farm and there's the dairy. It's actually very good. Ice. Well, there I, I oh, they probably okay. do have vegan ice cream at this point. I'm not sure if they did back when I was in school, but I would almost be sure that they do. I don't know. That's Penn State vibes. And he brought it the there creamery. to do his confessional with? I mean, if he just got it and came over, you know, I guess he, you can't just let it melt. Slow eater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, I also, uh, I enjoyed the Hugatana, like, tribe interview that they did. Like, that they just sat down. They, like, set that up, 
too. Like they like all sat on the table and faced me as if it was tribal council. It was interesting. Iconic. Is uh, Harry um, wearing? What else? Do I have? Is Harry wearing the uh, the Boston Rob hat? The uh, an attempt to channel oh. some strategic mastermind. Um, you know, I don't think he even knows who Boston Rob is. So, well, maybe he does. I guess if he like, probably owns all the hashtag things. Boston Harry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice the little B hat. That's, that's yeah, I didn't either. Wow. <laughs> I just then, I just always have when you when, when you wrestle the Boston Bomber. <laughs> mm. Yes. Um, thinking about it now. I also uh, well, I guess we can transition over, over to Hukatana because or well, my other question for myself really was why do I say Team Hukatana and Team Rafiki? <laughs> Anyone else pick up on that? I'm not sure why I didn't call them tribes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that would be my question for you. I I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking that to myself from years ago. <laughs> wow. You're getting used to the hosting, you know. Yeah. I like the idea that like I like the idea that you can use all of the music, the title of the show, the logo, but calling it a tribe violates the the copyright too much. <laughs> That's the one that made me stop. You're like, wait. <laughs> so um, that's so too let's far. Over Katana, if, unless there's any other major thoughts. Um, are we just running through our thoughts on episode four? Because I just want to give a big shout out to Faluke's Beyonce poster. Ah, that, yes. was, that loomed large in my mind during this episode. <laughs> well, I was going to say that Faluke, I don't know if you guys and I want to give a huge... Nope. Oh, a huge what? What? <laughs> I want to give a huge anti shout out to uh, to Zach's naked woman poster. I knew that was so, <laughs> yeah, so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's very funny to me. I don't like looking at that <laughs> butt above his head. <laughs> it's it, that I is, did not that like is it. I am on Survivor. There it is the dorm uh, doing a strategic strategy session and there are you know there are things you know, i love looking in the background and seeing like just like entire desks covered in so much fucking trash <laughs> and just like paper and like cups and stuff it's, like, it's it looks so disgusting but that's like part of the appeal yeah it's called like, cool. realism yeah yeah exactly um yeah, I, I was just going to transition. The other thoughts I had on episode four were um, all Hukatana oriented. So I was saying, I don't know if you guys noticed that Faluke was also filming during the challenge for that episode four. So she has many talents. Queen. She can do it all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So bye, Maria. Moving on to episode five in Hukatana. Um, Lita, did you have a lot happen with Hukatana over the course of these two episodes? Um, did you want to give your kind of high level thoughts? Why is Holly always doing crafts? <laughs> she's a legend. Like yes. she's she's literally the first confessional. She's just painting a piece of wood purple. Like that's <laughs> it. She's painting a piece of wood purple. Then she's in the laundry room and she's she has scissors and she's making a paper snowflake. And I don't yeah. know why this. And then in a confessional in your dorm, she's just holding a <laughs> pair of scissors in case she must craft on the fly. Big art student vibes. Um, I love the, it. Yeah, but the she's comments not. also. Say, I don't understand. <laughs> um, but this. Uh, the comments are right. We did also miss a shout out to Victoria's beautiful sunglasses. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I also want to say we missed a shout out to D Wang, whoever that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the roommates in this season are important characters. They never show up on screen, but you have to know the roommate did. characters. Yeah, D Wang. Yeah, I didn't realize there's like three or four of them. That <laughs> yeah, keep an keep an ear out for the roommates because you need to know them. They are vital to the storyline. Yeah, we need a D Wang update <laughs> every week. <laughs> anyway yeah i i've been writing down austin quotes i i also missed one um rafiki headed back to tribal council uh not sure what to say honestly <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's fair how were you to ever know that you would have to send people to tribal council you were totally unprepared for that situation. i think it was just the disgust that i had i mean just we all wanted to see another Hukatana tribal council. Not council. sure what to say, honestly. You're right. 
You yeah, guys are you guys grossed me out. I loved after Rafiki wins one challenge after losing three <laughs> in a row. They are so high and mighty about like they're like you're Suck never it. seeing this thing again. Like <laughs> it's like you just lost so much, so many people. They're still ahead of you after this travel happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they- there, there's <laughs> there's like a thing where who compared themselves to like. Sorry, Jarvis and Tyson. Jarvis. Jarvis, Tony Stark's um, robot assistant, Jarvis. Yeah, but but it's like perfect because Alex uh, also was a real Jarvis uh, after that (laughs) challenge, being all uh, cocky about the the idol and not working out for him. Yeah, Terry compares him and Zach to Tyson and Jarvis. But it's unclear which is which at first. Then he's like, and I guess I'm Jarvis. And I'm like, well, at least he's honest. Wait, I was watching that with Joe, who, and I, he was listening in. He was like, I also remember Jarvis. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then he said, wait, but I only remember the name Jarvis. So I don't, <laughs> it, like, maybe, he, maybe we're all remembering it wrong and it really yeah. was Jarvis. Well, didn't Terry end that whole spiel with like, yeah, I want to make a name for myself just like Jarvis, which isn't his actual <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was the yep. birth of, uh, of both... Um, the storylines of Jarvis as well as uh, Terry's frat scheduling. Um, yeah. Which, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you have thoughts on his uh, fraternity rushing scheduling, Derek? I don't know. Did you ever rush a fraternity? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> In have our you school, met? you didn't do that? No. <laughs> I was about to say, have you met me, but you haven't. But still, oh, you've yeah. seen it my tweets, really, dude. It was, it was really <laughs> the The what? The what? Yeah. I've no, <laughs> I drove by Frat Row <laughs> to get to my apartment. Does that count? <laughs> that counts. That's pretty close. I went to Fraternity Rush and then I decided not to. I, I think I got into the one that my dad was in and then I Ooh. decided not to pay my dues because I didn't want to pledge and I didn't do it. But I did rush and get into one. I specifically Ooh, remember being very relieved that you did not join a frat. <laughs> Yeah, same was about to go mask for not, mask on Lita. I, I did fun. not mask, not mask, I did not rush uh, for one second. Yeah, sorry. Um, so Derek, fraternities aside, how did you feel about how things went down for uh, Hukatana this episode? For Hukatana, like, uh, we talked about this uh, off mic earlier, but like, what an amazing tribe, what an amazing like tribal council like what a great crazy vote like well i don't even know like quite where everyone land like who was voting and for why like it was just great chaotic good gameplay on like pretty much everyone's part except for like harry (laughs) and katie i guess (laughs) but even then it's like they still i don't know they were still not doing a terrible job either i don't know this tribe is just amazing (laughs) Lita. I completely agree. The Hukatana tribe it is stacked. Yeah. Um, Sam, did you have a favorite Katie quote from this episode? I don't know if, if the others know the <laughs> most iconic one. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> oh, she okay. had just great, like her, she had a great classic, like survivor irony moment at tribal council of like saying, yeah, whoever goes home, just know no hard feelings. Like that was perfect. She set her own boot up perfectly with that. <laughs> Well, yeah, that was the one. She's, like, so, like, over the top about it, too, where she's, like, whoever gets voted out, I hope they know we love them anyways. <laughs> so good. I had to edit out. It was going to be too obvious, but, like, you see a couple shots of people smirking a little bit when she says that, but Zach was <laughs> losing it. Well, he is the smirk queen. You're right. Yeah, true. smirk queen. True. Why not? He's always smirking. I um, did love I when... was disappointed. Go ahead. You can. Uh, I did love when um, Holly has. A, it's like it goes directly from Holly's conversations with Zach and Faluke in the washing room, and she's like, they're all like planning to turn on Harry and uh, 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 Katie, and then she's like, then it goes to a Harry confessional, and Harry's like, yeah, like I don't think Holly's gonna turn on us. Like <laughs> he's just like so <laughs> confident in like his the Quidditch mm-hmm. alliance. Uh, My king. <laughs> You're king. <laughs> Luke mirrored Quidditch's 
lacrosse for some reason. <laughs> Good for her. This is she's the broom. Not, it's the broom. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You do with the broom? Yeah. No, yeah. she's the bludger. She is. I the mean, bludger, a yeah. beater. A beater. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Who am I to question Faluke? <laughs> Good for Faluke for reading a different book. She was ahead of her time. <laughs> yeah. All right, we um, you were. Yeah. I was disappointed that this episode is called Girl Power and my fanfic of Holly and Faluke creating an all-girl alliance happens and then a woman is voted out. To weaken a man, this is an old trope. Uh, yeah, just I wonder what your thoughts on that were going to be. Faluke did a good job of explaining the reasoning behind I it, was though, about to sense. say, just because he's a dog who runs around in circles and uh, Katie is the key, and if she <laughs> the unlocks holder. the door, then he'll run around in circles more. Or just because we are in the company and we're on one <laughs> floor of the company, and Harry is on a different floor of the company, doesn't mean we needed to vote out Katie. Okay, we could have just voted out Harry. I think that they are still creating an all-female line. They're just only choosing the iconic women, uh, <laughs> Sabrina and Marissa and Victoria, over you know Katie, who's Cool, but it's still an all-female alliance. You know, they've got to vote out some women. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and they don't want to take away my eye candy. The, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, how do you remember? That? Oh, yeah, Faluki, I feel like like that. Uh, that's really, I don't know why they haven't cast her on Survivor, because like they love the analogies. And she just goes on these runs where it's like five of them back to back to back. <laughs> Yeah, like great confessional giver. Clearly has a great mind for the game. Anyway, like yeah, please cast Faluke Survivor people. We're begging um, you. <laughs> I'm sure they're listening. Intently. They better be. <laughs> um, the uh, um, what was I going to say? Um, I, I we did we touched on the Terry uh, thing already, but uh, Lita, did you catch that there was another reference to Terry not living in Plata? We needed to go back to the map. Yes, yeah, we need to look at the map in case you forgot that his dorm is literally yards from the other dorms. And that means that he is completely on the outs. He has way too many other commitments. Um, there, are, there are certain things that Austin needs to remind me of constantly. One is the maps. Uh, the other is that you have 10 feet. 10 feet. How many feet do we have, Austin? 10. You have 10 feet, and then you'll have 9 feet, but you start with 10 feet. It took them a long time to understand that. They were like, what are you talking like, like It took me until they were down to like four feet to go, oh, <laughs> oh that's what they're doing. Yeah, I thought people had to drop out of the challenge or something. to Because I was like, how is anybody going to have zero feet? This is just how my mind works. <laughs> that I would have never thought of it in a million years. Um, the, I would have just the said, like, do you have to jump? jump? Do you have to be carried? <laughs> well, you do what have to be carried, but I thought like, do you have to be... Do you have to be tossed? Across like, that's where my mind went. <laughs> was it a catapult challenge? No, like, from person to person. <laughs> oh, 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 that actually is an interesting... Well, no. no please, no. No, that's um, a terrible idea unless you have a team of cheerleaders. <laughs> the, uh, Which the, I do, funny, but... I used to do this challenge up through... I feel like everything through Terrapin Trials is one era of the show, and then everything else is, like, I was a different person, but... I used to do the Survivor Olympics, which were, it was like a three. So there was that challenge, there was volleyball, and there was handball. But I cut out handball because it was so dark and you couldn't even see anything. Um, oh, I thought you meant dark totally. Why, like, I, no yeah. one, <laughs> what? I thought you meant like dark, like dark, terrible things happen oh, when, no, you no, get, no, no, when you do handball. It got dark. <laughs> the lighting is so great in all the other parts. Perfect um, for Terrapin Trials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the what? I said a dark totally challenge is perfect for Terrapin Trials. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, the I don't know if you can tell, but they end up with the feet thing and they're cheering, and then they it suddenly cuts them cheering on the sand in the volleyball court, which is because they actually won the challenge over there. Oh. So yeah, fun fact for everyone. <laughs> um, Austin designed this challenge 100 percent just so he could say that people were literally carrying other people <laughs> on their back. Yeah, <laughs> literally carrying the tribe on their back, and so he could say the phrase "impressive feat," like F E A T, which is also good. <laughs> uh, you know, the more puns, I just that's what I'm trying to work in. That was the point of doing this show was to really air the puns mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, I liked after the challenge. What do you think about? Um, I liked how after the challenge, the tri Hukatana tribe like all got. They were all like having a meeting. <laughs> I don't. Even, I like, all of them stayed and like talked to camera about like 
their tribe unity. <laughs> Except <laughs> Terry. Well, yeah. Terry has to go fraternize. <laughs> fraternize. He does. Yeah, that was good too. Someone was yelling at, at them at some point. I didn't. I couldn't tell what was going on there. <laughs> it was weird. I just. I don't know. Like I saw the cones and said, "Oh boy, it's time for another weed smoking competition." <laughs> As the cops would that. say, <laughs> they look very confused. The, the, blindfold, the blindfold challenge. The cops, when I was setting up, thought that I was setting up, or that I was smoking weed, because it, it's a spot that apparently people <laughs> use to smoke weed. And uh, they were like, they were like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm, I'm like setting up a challenge." And they were like, "Is it a weed smoking challenge?" And I was like, <laughs> I hear "Cones here. Why can would I, I be in that challenge?" That's the only like way I, I can well. do it. <laughs> the cops are quoting Faluke in that. She goes, "You got that weed?" <laughs> yeah, it's literally a tea bag. Literally yeah. is like a tea bag going in hot water, and she's like, "Thought you had that weed." <laughs> <laughs> Good for Fluke. <laughs> Sam's right. They were just stand. They're Fluke stands. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as um, they should. Yes. The uh, um. What was I going to say? Oh, do we have thoughts on Katie's uh, quote? Do we agree with this? I find it easier in life just to be neutral. Has or hashtag it's definitely easier. <laughs> it's yeah, that's easier. why I'm wearing a gray buff, moral. gray shirt, uh, black shorts, black socks. You know, I just like to be like. Totally. Uh, no, even. Tones. no, yeah. What they say about the world is that people who do nothing are actually the people who save it. <laughs> when evil people do bad things, the people who do nothing are the real heroes. <laughs> yes, that's what Katie was going for. Yeah, I agree, Lena. It did yeah. feel very, uh, <laughs> very donut Twitter, as they say. Switzerland is the most defensible <laughs> country in the world. I just don't. I mean, also in Survivor, like, famously playing the middle and not choosing a side <laughs> always works every time. Just ask yeah. Christy Smith or me. <laughs> oh. You just want to be the swing vote in life. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a... I know we, we're not getting into too deep in the strategy here, but um, the... Uh, it was a big... It was a, uh, I think a lot happened in the episode for Zach. Obviously, he found an idol. Um and it also, I, I think it was down somewhat, at least, to him and, and Terry to kind of decide where things went. What did uh, you guys think? I got, we'll start with Lita. What did you think of the, the Zach overall or the decisions he made or anything? Well, I thought that ultimately, so he did vote for Katie, right? I actually think, did, did I show the votes at the end? I don't it know. was, um, the votes for Katie were Terry, Faluke, and Victoria, right? Or yeah. Did oh, yeah, so I think I think Zach and Holly threw their votes onto Terry. Okay, but they knew what was going on. Yes. Yeah, so I do think for Zach, like it would have been a mistake to go for Victoria. I know he kind of wanted to, but his reasoning I think was very bad, which is that like I kind of want to vote for Victoria because like Faluke will get over it. It's like I feel like she's the last person that you want to cross who will like not be angry after she just went on a very long rant about how she will cut you <laughs> and like mess you up physically and emotionally and then every single person has a confessional it's like Faluke is very scary <laughs> like I feel like Zach's reasoning of Faluke will be fine with it when I betray her best friend in the game uh was a very flawed reasoning and I'm glad that he did not follow that logic mm -hmm. Plus, it's like if the goal was to not make them or to make the least amount of waves, that would mean Terry going like <laughs> so yeah. that reason just didn't make sense. Right. It's interesting because I feel like Zach is the most like strategically minded and like or trying the most things strategically on this tribe. But he's also like apparently bad at doing this because <laughs> he's like he's in with Victoria, Fluke and Holly and Terry or whatever. But Victoria has a confessional where she's like. I know that Zach is playing both sides and like, it's hard for me to trust him because of that. But like, he's still like in with everybody. So it's like interesting to watch him be like both good in some ways. And then like, just so clearly involved in everything from everyone else's perspective. Cause even with Terry, he's talking and he's like, yeah, I'm also with Victoria and Fluke and I think we should go with them. And I feel like if, I mean, I don't know, I guess Terry's just looking for a convenient 
alliance because he doesn't want to put too much time into the show. <laughs> uh, so, it, so like, it, he goes with it. But, like, Zach is just, like, very flagrant with his alliancing. <laughs> the Yeah, I, it, that's an interesting point because I feel like he – his decisions end up being like correct, but the way he gets there, I'm not really sure how. And even the like the confessionals or the quotes he makes, I'm like, I, is that right? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, Lita, did you have any other uh, thoughts or, or questions about Hukatana slash episode five you wanted to get out there? Um, no, I, I think I just must know why Holly is always doing crafts. I, I'm I know assuming that she it's a sorority the first episode, thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully Holly can remind she, she nods, having no idea what that means. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're always crafting together. They are. Yeah. Um, some people make Greek mm-hmm. life their whole personality slash storyline, and some people just have it as a background thing. <laughs> well, speaking of Women Holly's... be crafting. <laughs> <laughs> I love Holly's quote of um, he can't trust me, which I understand, which was pretty iconic. Good <laughs> um, Black Widow like vibes. <laughs> love it. Queen Holly. Um, yeah, when we get the Holly tell all, we'll have to ask her. Love Holly. <laughs> Actually, I feel like all my episode five notes were funny quotes to me. Like, I think at one point Zach says, the ideas of her words, I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the words? I don't know. But the ideas behind them? <laughs> the ideas of the words, yes. Very so good. I agree with killing the yeah. other one, literally, but I don't know if I would say it that <laughs> outright. Right. Oh, and we didn't yeah, talk about... Yeah, I mean, Zach had a lot of... Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say we didn't talk about Faluke sh- like shit-talking Eric hilariously. <laughs> yeah. Um, saying he's never... Well, he's never had a girlfriend, well, a serious one. <laughs> And that he was voted cutest couple with his twin sister in high school. What the fuck? <laughs> like, how do you know that's, this? That's into... on the. They, they went. That's to high absolutely school. on the high school. What? Is that your king, Derek? Is that your king? Harry is. I, 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 he can do no wrong in my eyes. I wasn't saying this negatively. It was a very hilarious conversation. <laughs> uh, um, Derek or Lolita? Sorry, go. Well, I was just going to say Zach had another quote that I like, where he said. Um, something like uh, he finds the idol and says that uh, as lo- unless I use it incorrectly or I don't use it, this could take me to the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you get it, man. Good That's job. Actually correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it's better than Ty Trang saying, and I won't get out of this with an idol in my pocket um, like 75 times. Uh, yeah. Another king. He did. Right. Well, he did go home with the idol, but not in the not in the bad way. Yeah. He just didn't use it. Exactly. He didn't need to. He's a genius. Uh, yes. Um, but speaking of my king, Sam, he also spoke for all of us when he said he only cared about Victoria's opinion on something. <laughs> same. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Feminist icon. He even referenced yeah, Mean Girls. Like, hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Derek, do you have uh, uh, thoughts overall on Victoria? We haven't really talked about her a lot. So uh, I would... the sunglasses. I would actually say she's my favorite so far, like other than like Faluke. Those two are like in an ideal world, that's the final two and they both get to win somehow. <laughs> I haven't seen how Survivor Maryland ends. Maybe that's a thing that can happen. <laughs> it's a double crowning. <laughs> so yeah, I just love that pair and Victoria specifically is just so cool. Like, I don't know. She's like, it's like fire and ice with her and Faluke. It's a great combo. Yeah. Love them. I would describe it exactly as that. <laughs> yeah, and no. I. Go ahead. Uh, no, that was the end of my thought. <laughs> Victoria, <laughs> Victoria so. so. Um, I am just here for the Victoria Holly Faluke final three. Is there going to be a final three? What if it's a final two? Uh, <laughs> it sucks for the final three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she was also like, "Oh, then it's just us two, right?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, great save. I, I think that Austin would be a cruel dictator if he didn't make it a final three if those were the final three. I just change up the, uh, yeah. Surprise final three. It's yeah. what we deserve. I like, um, exactly. well, yeah. I think that that's the goal. In the in the Holly Fuluke conversation, they're just like, it's we'll get Marissa and Sabrina, and then once, those, once the five of us are in alliance, it'll just be the three of us and then I guess they're just like willing to play it out from there. And that's the goal. But I, I wish Victoria was there too. So that, I mean, obviously she would have just agreed 
to in that conversation, but like I wanted I wanted to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hear the words from her. Yeah. Holly Fluke and Victoria Legends each. Yep. They're okay. they're already taking up three of the four Mount Rushmore spots on Survivor Maryland for me. So <laughs> it's, there's <laughs> one that's already been carved along with Kermit. Yes, Kermit could be the fourth one. He deserves it. <laughs> they were three of the final four of Maryland Madness, so I guess you might be right. Hello. Oh wow. <laughs> well, they, they must all go out back to back to back the next three episodes. <laughs> the Don't only you dare even say that. <laughs> Um, well, Derek, since we, since you are truly unspoiled, do you have yes. a winner pick? Oh, like at the beginning, I was like, it's, I feel like it's Zach. Well, first of all, before I say, can I ask, are, the, um, are these edited after like the whole season has played yeah. out? Yeah. Okay. So there is technically a winner's edit in some way. Um, I first I was thinking Zach because he was doing like a good job of being in the middle on that tribe, but now I'm starting to lean uh, I don't know. Like, I think Eric, if it's a Rafiki person, maybe, um, like, I don't know. Like, in my dreams, it would be, like, Holly or Victoria, but I don't know. I guess those four are the four I'm looking at, but I, like, maybe I'm trained to think it's a man by <laughs> recent Survivor, but to me, it's, like, Zach and Eric are the two I'm really looking at. Um, but, yeah, so those are my picks, I guess. Okay. So one fourth of the cast are my winner. <laughs> the yeah. three of us who know wins, just like trying to be as neutral as possible. At you. mm -hmm. You're like, like Katie said, it's yes. always easier to be neutral. It could sure. be anyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Lita, should we go to the awards? Yes, please. Are we doing, are we going around the horn and we're all doing it? Yeah. 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 I was, I was thinking we could. Yeah. Watch it all. Um, cool. The, uh, so, I don't know if we should keep doing this one this episode. You guys tell me, but we can at least do it since we have more people here. Um, did you have a, a new person you wanted to be friends with, Lita? Um, I don't think a new person. I think I'm still in on uh, on my originals, my Holly, Victoria, Faluke, and Sabrina. Okay. Girl power. But, but Holly definitely rose this week because she had a visible episode. Yeah. Um... Uh, Derek, do you have one that you really just want to be friends with over everyone? Like from this cast who I would want to be friends with? It sounds like uh, Harry, but... I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> be more than friends with Harry, but um, let's see. I would say, yeah, those are all great picks. Probably, I feel like Holly probably seems like someone I would want to be friends with. Um, just like, I feel like she has, I don't know, a good... Like, she clearly likes Survivor. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I don't know. She has a good, I can't even explain it. <laughs> good aura, good vibes, all that good stuff. I need to know her sign just so I can like confirm, like let's get a birth chart yeah. from Holly just yeah. so we can make sure that it, yeah. we're compatible. <laughs> I should display that on the bottom. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hello. I think every survivor season needs that. <laughs> I know that people maybe are watching this who might edit the show. I would really appreciate it if in the Chirons it said, the year of school they're in. I think that that is so important to the information. At least some of the they're time. They're all freshmen. Freshman. In this season, sure. Freshman, comma, Capricorn. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, um, Holly is a Virgo. <gasps> Ooh, Virgo. There, that's perfect. Yes, I love other Virgos so much. We're the best, so I could be best friends with Holly. <laughs> Kevin is a Virgo. Oh, hello. And so Which I, I need because I'm a Gemini. So. Gemini's, yay. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't know there were yeah. uh, six people on this call. <laughs> <laughs> For me, mm -hmm. being yeah. friends, definitely Holly and Victoria. I could see myself hanging out with. Mm -hmm. um, if Eric wants to give me a call, slide into my DMs. <laughs> I'm willing to hear him out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, those. Well, obviously Sabrina, who hasn't been brought up yet. <laughs> I, yeah, Sabrina would be a good friend. Yeah, I'm Sabrina's just trying to think of so funny and great, and also Marissa. Uh, you know, Faluke. <laughs> I feel like yeah, all these girls seem like girls I would love to just like. They would be the one I would talk to like during a college course if I didn't know anyone. Like I would sit by them and talk to them. Humble brag here, but I just made plans with Sabrina to hang out after quarantine today. So oh, you know, 
It's fine. So jealous. It's where it is. Yeah, what the well, hell? in five months, <laughs> give her our love. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do. If she's, will you will you ask her if she's still in touch with Eric, and if so, extend my number through her. <laughs> yeah, because that makes sense. Because I couldn't just still like... in touch with Eric. <laughs> Look, I'm just making jokes here, people. <laughs> Damn, I thought you swore off jokes. <laughs> That's in that chat. Yeah. This oh, okay. this is not okay. uh this is not that chat. Got it. Okay. I think Sam swears on joke off jokes a lot. So I frequently say I'll never make another joke, and it never holds true. <laughs> Um, I'm just too damn funny. <laughs> you can't yeah. keep me locked in a door. I'm just gonna run around in circles making jokes yeah. in there. Who's the key holder? <laughs> the key Myself. holder and the dog. <laughs> you are Sam home. is happy. Sam is happy to be a keyhole for Eric. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm keyhole. Yeah, I'm just a keyhole. Right. Um, I will be here. <laughs> <Harry's> key. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, the, uh, Lita, I, 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 don't, I mean, I don't know if the other people want to weigh in. We did say we were judges tonight, but um, we, we've had Charlie and Harry on the cancellation list. Would you like to add, to add anyone to the cancellation list? Oh no, Harry got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ale Alex is on thin ice. Okay, Alex is on is on watch, judicial watch. Oh, Where are the I'm people making? To, I'm gonna push him down into He's the on ice. <laughs> Who made the joke about <laughs> someone made like a sex joke about one of the Rafiki girls? I think it was Harry. Shit. It doesn't count if it's him. He's already canceled, right? <laughs> yeah. He can do whatever he wants now. Right. He's my man. I will stick by him no matter what. <laughs> um do you have a uh, a favorite moment overall? Uh Maria's mask. Mar Maria's out. <laughs> Whatever. No, Marissa's mask. Was still a moment in the episode. Oh, Marissa. Marissa's mask. Yes, Marissa's Marissa's COVID policy was iconic. Yeah. Yes. My favorite scene was Dwayne saying somebody died here. <laughs> <laughs> she died, dude. Dwayne <laughs> is, really says, Dwayne dude, is literally. Died. He's literally a uh, Thunder D or whatever. Thunder uh, D Wang. Sandra voice. He's yeah. Nice, Thunder D Wang. Wow. Um, my favorite scene. Yeah, was he's just somebody's buddy. My favorite scene was definitely Holly, Faluke, and Zach in the washroom. But then mm -hmm. also Zach, a Victoria, <laughs> and also a random girl. Zach, Victoria, and Faluke meeting in Zach's dorm where they're. Or no, this happened in the washing room where Zach was like just looking at his phone, like lying to them and like just smiling, <laughs> and like they were just like, "It's we. This is so suspicious. Like you're not even looking <laughs> at us." Um, that was great. But also, this wasn't in the episodes we watched, but in the next time on, you're Austin. You're like, I think Austin's frozen, but. Austin goes like, and Faluke makes a discovery, and then just a high pitched scream, <laughs> like the rest of the uh, the next time on. Right, Faluke discovers the body that D Wang was talking. About. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I wish I just, that I had. I just, um, I yeah, I we, wish I first that I had. You, you were just making like a smirky face. <laughs> I'm not for back. fun. <laughs> I wish that I had watched Survivor Maryland before taking a Survivor Maryland tour of the Maryland campus so that I would have a better memory of where things are and like what things where I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I remember stuff and then most of the time I'm... <laughs> you just need a map, always. Yeah, oh, that was my <laughs> suggestion. You need to be like a fantasy, like those fantasy books where they have the map at the beginning. You should do that. <laughs> A reference guy for every or episode. the Broadway musical Wicked, where they have the yeah, map exactly. at the beginning on the stage. I don't know if uh, if Jack Stavinik is still here in the chat, but he needs to add a map to this Rive Maryland wiki. Yes, yeah, get on that, Jack. And a and a, a song of ice and fire style like rundown of like how everyone is related to each other in the back with like house sigils and everything. A song of Victoria and Fluke. <laughs> Please. <laughs> There's because wait, is, is someone on? Oh no, I'm thinking of. Uh, I just watched the Guts and Glory premiere too, but there's family members who play. Yeah, Guts and Glory has some legacy people. Um, at least one. Uh, oh. There is a uh, uh, season six 
features Eric King's brother. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I know yeah. Lita was looking for more King content. <laughs> um, Thank God. Eric King's brother, not as much my King as Eric King. Oh, no. <laughs> and that King did do it for you? Not as much. He's a prince. Sam hitting on Eric King. Is there an Eric Queen? <laughs> <laughs> I think people are saying that's Sabrina, it seems. Oh, yeah. At least yeah. in this, in the canon of the show, but it doesn't have to be real, true in real life. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, did we have uh, a uh, uh, standout um, that is so college moment? The poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really the weird. woman's ass just <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, well, I, I only have this. This. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. I have other. I love Sabrina being like, I've done more strategizing for Survivor than studying for my physics test tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, very. It was very buffy. Yeah. Like I've I've been hunting vampires more than I've been studying for physics or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I would never play one of these. Like at first, I was a little bit bitter that. Survivor Michigan started like pretty shortly after I graduated, maybe two years. Um, at, at first I was pretty annoyed, but then I was like, I would have been on production for that. Like I'd love to be a part of it, but there's no way I would be able to do my work and play. Like I am, I'm playing an online game with my friends where you take right now I'm playing diplomacy where you take one turn every 24 hours. And that is distracting me from my work. So <laughs> I would not be able to, uh, to do this. I would. I feel like I would be like physically ill all the time because I'd be nervous so often. Yeah, right. It, it's a weird thing where like it wasn't good for some people academic wise, but some people had their best semesters during Survivor because they were like, "Oh my god, I gotta manage my time. Like, I gotta knock out this assignment so that I can go strategize with people." So I yeah, may work that. <laughs> I, I think my, it would be fun. Yeah, I think my college moment is just every time they someone makes like a sex joke and they're all like, "Oh." Woo. Someone said something about sex. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I have felt really old watching this season. <laughs> <laughs> like hashtag dildo gate. That still is to me the epitome of like college. Like ooh, incredible. Scandalous. She said the word dildo. I don't even know what the context was, but she said it. So oh my god! <laughs> Especially when Sierra was a literal priest. So oh no 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 not really. <laughs> we, oh. we talked last episode <laughs> about Sierra being like. The way she chooses to live her life. A woman of God. Just, I kind of love that. So <laughs> conservative. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the last one I have is uh, the, we've, we've, for Lita, we've called it the Brilli or the, the Lita of the pack for the, the player of the week. Um, Lita, who was your pick for this week? I think we got to do Holly. She's making plans for the end. Her name didn't really come up. She seems to be in good with everybody. So, uh, and she's the legend. So. <laughs> Sam? Oh, me. Okay. I, for the first episode, it's definitely Eric. He's the strategic mind on that tribe and he's controlling every single vote. He is the leader of the pack. No one's coming for him. Everyone's trying to take uh, everyone he wants out, out. He has his ears everywhere. He knows what's going on in every conversation. He's a genius. Uh, <laughs> and for episode two, I would have to say Zach. I mean, he's, he's, bad with the he he wants he has point a and he has point b and his logic doesn't make any sense and it shouldn't go there but it still gets him to the point b somehow uh so that's interesting right i'm giving my yeah i would agree with both of you for eric and holly i think would be my two picks too for the individual episodes i think maybe luke too like it's hard to like you kind of have to knock Victoria for kind of being like an option, but I think Faluke and Holly played that whole scenario pretty perfectly, I would say. So, yeah, those would be my picks. Cool. Yeah. Well, any other uh, thoughts from the room? Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like we ran through I, I, I don't know what to say, honestly. <laughs> Let me check my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to quote a great survivor mind, yes. Oh, <laughs> I forgot probably the best um, like post tribal quote ever from a contestant is um, it was Kane in like at the beginning of episode five. He's like, um, we should do this, you know, just in case Eric gets too much power. 
<laughs> like, you know, if we ever get to that point where Eric has too much power, <laughs> like, just, like, yeah, just really illustrates exactly how much he really understands what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I, like, he would have to have the tribe, like, just, like, running around in circles, like, on command with the snap to have more power at that point. Like a dog in a room, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he holds the keys. <laughs> he does. Yeah, I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Sam, anything else from you? Um, No, I love Survivor Maryland episodes four and five. I Like I said before, I did not remember who was going home, so it was fun to like just like go through that and not know what's going to happen. Uh, it was great. I love it, and I can't wait to listen to more of these recaps because Terrapin Trials is an awesome season. Are you? Is it holding up well for you, even though you're watching Gus and or you start watching Gus and Glory premiere? I just want. Well, I I was do I. I ha- I only watched the premiere and I stopped after the challenge because the person that I'm watching for uh won the challenge. So I it's they both are good. There's definitely a clear bump up in production value, but it's still really good. Okay. And I and I'm excited because the merge of Terrapin Trials, even though the pre merge is really, really good, it's like that whole just it's so amazing. I can't I I'm probably gonna re- continue rewatching the season after this. Yeah, I'm so so excited to keep watching. I'm obsessed. Um, the, uh, so you can follow Lita uh, at Lita Tweeted um, and uh, Lita Grams on Instagram. Did I, I got that right? Mm-hmm. Um, Derek, where can people follow you? Um, well, I am one half of the only queer survivor oh, podcast is that what our branding is. It's something like that. Something so like that. I hope you're any... not doing like, the Sam Smith at the Oscars. Yeah, we are the first uh, like non-straight people to ever talk about Survivor. If you want to hear two white men talk about Survivor, but they aren't straight, come to us. You know, we we fulfill that niche for you that you really need. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we yes we are bitter jurors. Um, we have a Twitter bitter jurors pod, um, and I personally am Rain Derricks R E I N D E E R like Rain Deer and then E K S um, on Twitter. A good point. Uh, yeah, oh. thank you. Yeah, it's, well, We're, my last name is Rining, so you know, switching double letters wow. around. Anyway, <laughs> we are the bitter jurors, and tomorrow our merge episode of Winners at War recap with Gabby Pescuzzi is coming Ooh, out. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so, if you're interested in hearing our thoughts, but more importantly, the wonderful, wonderful thoughts of a survivor legend and genius, uh, Queen Gabby icon. from <laughs> Queen Icon. From David versus Goliath, uh, you can listen to that tomorrow. Great episode. Very good. Very fun. We only barely talk about Animal Crossing, so <laughs> <laughs> it seems like Gabby's been very, pretty big on the Animal Crossing, right? <laughs> From what I could tell, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks to all of you. Oh, uh, uh, hello to Shira from Pakistan. Hello. Hello. I'm with we you. love you. We stand you. You're probably a queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would I would imagine so. When Not is she so. gonna be on Survivor Maryland? I, look, yeah. um it's a good question. <laughs> this time. Um okay, cool. Well we will figure out um the uh, oh Lita, do you have a time you want us to propose for next? I don't know. Oh, uh this week is more complicated because of Passover. Um, but okay. maybe uh, I, I don't know. Let's let's follow up uh Should we do there. one before the first two na- Passover starts Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should name for Tuesday. Does that work? If you let me know. Uh. Sure. Yeah, I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can Stop. we also get a live reaction to the uh, Rugrats Passover episode in addition to oh. Survivor Maryland? <laughs> that would actually be a solid podcast for Austin and I to do. I, I haven't. I don't even know if I've ever seen that. But yes, I have. I have seen that one. It's a classic. I. Nice. It's, it's worth a rewatch. <laughs> okay, we'll factor in our thoughts on that. We'll go, we'll go backwards in age. It'll be Benjamin Button down. Or, to- <laughs> hey, I've never seen Prince of Egypt. What? So, that's, yeah, Prince of Egypt is so good. Yeah, that's a pretty iconic. Do we do we like the original Ten Commandments movie? Because I I kind of have a nostalgic connection to. Oh, they just did that on uh, the Ted Oscar Buzz. Oh, interesting. Oh. I think I've seen commercials for that. Didn't they? They would used to air that on like network TV or something. Yeah, they like every before every Passover. They probably still right. do. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we'll. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on.
Thank you for having this us. This was fun. Thanks, I hope Austin. I'm up in these comments next. I, I want to get the comment section like really on fire next time you guys do this. There weren't as many as I wanted. Yeah, I know. I know. We got to get the hive out. We got to turn out the hive. I got, I'm going to I'm gonna argue with someone next time. I'll be, I'll be here and I'll just be like attacking you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can't wait. Talk All right. to you guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.